Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. My name is Alex Murphy, and I'm a Doctor Who scarf knitter. And today, I am here to make a tutorial on working with chenille, generally and specifically with this custom chenille run that I put together for the Season 18 scarf, which is right here. I'm currently making a scarf out of it. It's a very difficult yarn to work with. It's 100% acrylic, and it's very, very, very soft. So it tends to worm, and it can be a bit of a pain. I'm gonna give you the very basic tips on working with this to help you if you've never ever used chenille before. Also, I've been saying for a long time that I'm gonna do a tutorial on how to do the color joins, these here. So I will talk about that as well. And hopefully someone who's never made one of these before will have a decent reference to use. So the first thing to understand about chenille is how it's different from normal yarn. So regular yarn, essentially, you have fibers that have been spun together, and that's your yarn, and it's stretchy, and it does stuff. This is completely different. You have a fiber here that's made up of a bunch of very, very short fibers that have been wrapped around a central core. You can see the core there. It's two yarns that are currently untwisting. And the... See, there's a good pile of fiber, a couple of pile of fibers that are loose right there and isolated. So that's how the entire yarn is made, is those these shorter fibers, called pile fibers, are wrapped around the these core yarns. And you get this. Chenille in French literally means caterpillar. And this is what you get. And this is the actual yarn that you'll be receiving if you have not yet received chenille from the chenille run. So because of this difference from normal yarn, it's a lot different to work with and it can be very tricky. It's not elastic. This yarn does not stretch. Normal yarn, you take it and you go boo and it pulls and this yarn doesn't. It's also very fragile. If you take it and you pull on it too hard, it just snaps right off. I don't even bring scissors with me when I knit a chenille in public because there's no reason to. I just snap my yarn end when I'm done. So to give you a really quick, a really quick overview, I'm losing my light here too, so I will have to be very, very quick. The main thing that you want to pay attention to is that you're staying fairly consistent with your stitch size. You can see it's at least relatively consistent. The yarn, because of the plushness or lack thereof, will sort of always by nature be a little messy with this particular yarn but you can see that generally speaking all of my my tension is pretty even throughout you, you get at least a consistent looking fabric here that is best achieved by knitting tightly because when you knit tightly especially on a yarn like chenille that doesn't pull on itself. It doesn't, it doesn't have any stretch, so you can't overstretch it then have it pull back into shape. When you knit it tightly, you're giving it as little air as possible on the needle to be inconsistent with itself. So you have essentially as, as even as is physically possible by knitting a little tighter. The other thing you want to do, and I'll show you this by actually demonstrating, this is the very, very, very quick version of this. The important thing is that you want to keep your tension very tight on the edges because this yarn, especially this chenille, will worm on the edges more than anywhere else. You want to keep your stitches really, really tight here and really even here. So let me show you what I'm going to do here. This is going to be particularly loose because this is my first strand of purple here. So I can actually, I'll, I'll be pulling that tighter later, but I want to go in and generally speaking, again, this one's kind of an exception because it's the first of the purple, but I want to make sure that I'm not pulling on that purple stitch like at all. I want it to just be as tight as is possible. I'm pulling, when I'm moving my stitches along, I'm pulling down. And this is something I hear from pretty much everyone who I've been talking to who I feel does really good work with chenilles that they're pulling on the fabric as they're knitting it. And that will help help even out your tension here. Oh, it got stuck. Okay. So there we go. Pulling that off. Even the second one, I won't try to pull on that stitch at all. 
Now those are the exceptions because generally speaking, what I want to do is when I put my needle and you'll see that how this is, how this, how the stitch is moving is that this stitch right here, this, this coming from the previous stitch is going up under here and is right here. So when I pull on this, it's pulling on that. You see that pull? You want to keep that moving. Because of the way that the chenille is made, it will catch on itself. The pile fibers will fall out and you'll be left with a bare core fiber. And when you're left with a bare core fiber, it doesn't want to move. And that's how you start worming. Because you'll have not enough yarn here on this side of the loop, too much yarn over here, and it's not going to want to move. So you want to make sure that you're pulling that. You should feel a little tug, you should feel a little, a little crunching. I, th I think of it as crunching, see, I'm pulling that. Because if you don't, some of them won't want to go. These ones, because I've been pulling on them and such, they, they're they fairly loose already, they want to go. And that's good. But some of them will be a bit tighter, You'll it'll really give you a little bit of trouble and then you can pull. You should feel the fabric moving under you, under your fingers. And again, on this side, when I move these out, I pull on it. So I'll let that sit and I'll take this, and I'm pulling down and pushing out, pulling and pushing. Can you see that right there? That's where it, it was trying to wear itself. That's where it was it was touching the other yarn. And if you let that sit in that spot, then it will bear and you will not you you will get a fabric that doesn't want to move. You'll get a very wormy fabric. Now we're coming to the end. I'm keep pulling these out, make sure they're loose, keep pulling it out. These last two stitches, you don't want to pull out like that. You want to intentionally do the opposite because if you pull them out, there's going to be too much slack here. What happens is when you go back the other direction, when you're knitting in the middle of the fabric, is that it's being pulled on by every stitch on either side and every stitch above and below. This only has one stitch on the side. It doesn't have two. It doesn't have one on the other side, so it doesn't have anything to pull it. So this will be very, very loose and you'll get worms on the edge of your yarn. This is how you prevent it. See, normally I would take it and I would take that and I would pull on that and I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick the needle directly through and it will be a, little bit, a bit tight. Pull that. Oh, I, did I miss it? I missed it. There we go. Okay, and move that off. Again, I'm not pulling. I can very easily pull this really, really loose and I'm not going to. What I'm actually going to do even here is I'm just going to get the tip of my needle into it. Just going to get the tip of my needle right into there and then I'm not even going to push on it any further. I'm just going to slip it off my old needle just like that. So it's only as big as the one needle. And you're going to do that back the other direction. It's not necessarily screen accurate to slip the last stitch the way that I did. I do it because the less extra chenille you have on the side, the neater your edge looks. The exhibition scarves are knitted all the way across and it's very, very, very likely, even though we haven't been able to observe it yet, the screen used to season 18 is the same way that it's all knitted all the way across. Now, the difference being that vintage Surter yarn, the wool chenille is a lot easier to work with. It's a lot more user-friendly and it does not worm very often. It's very bulky chenille. Um, here, I'm, what, I'm just playing it safe. I want as clean an edge as possible. And this particular scarf, my client has actually asked me to cast on slightly more to make up the, the, the width that's missing from here because this chenille that ended up happening was a little thinner than was promised.
So in order to hit proper gauge, she's actually asked me to cast on a couple more, which which gives me, I've got four four extra stitches in here. It's at 46 instead of 42. You can see, I mean, look how neat that, that edge is. That's a really neat edge. So if you can, I would recommend doing this even if it's not 100% screen accurate because with this chenille, it just makes a much, much neater edge. All right, so we're gonna go in. I've got my last my other stitch on there. Putting it in, remember I don't want to pull on this one. I wanna keep it as tight as possible. And that happens quite a bit. So I'm trying as much as I can to not pull on the purple as much as possible. Pull my new stitch through, good. Pull that really tight on the edge. Again, I don't wanna pull on that second one either. Now that I've got those two, I can start to pull on it a little bit more. And now we're back to, see, you can see right there where it's trying to bear. We go back to pulling on my stitches. Okay, again, got to the end. You don't want to pull on that one too much, and you don't want to pull here at all. I'm just going to slip that over to my new needle. And this I can pull tight because it's the new one. So there, see I've got another row done. It's fairly even. I don't have any worms. I'm continuing my, my nice neat edge. The next thing I wanna talk about with you guys is the, the ribbed color changes because that seems to put people off. It's really easy. It's really, really simple, even if it doesn't quite look so simple at first. So you'll see I've already started one. When you start one of these, you leave the old yarn on. You don't touch the old yarn. And all you do is you take your new color and you leave a little tail and then you just knit with it. You just pick it up and knit with it all the way across, do a full rib, one pass this way, one pass that way, like you just watched me do with the red, without anything new. You don't, you don't cut your old yarn, you don't Put, move it around, nothing. You just, you take your, you take your old skein and you move it to the right side, put your new skein on the left side or however you hold your yarn. This is how I do mine. And then you just knit a full rib. And then as you just saw me do, when you get back, the next thing that you're going to do, instead of cutting your purple and starting new with your red, you just take your red and you bring it up the way that you just saw me do before and you just knit yourself a rib. Now when you get back here, you're gonna take your, your remaining skein of red, put it over to the left, move your purple over to the right in a circular formation. You're gonna bring it around this way. That'll keep things from getting tangled. And now your purple's all just, it's just sitting here waiting to be knit into your third rib, into its second rib. So you're just gonna take it and it's just gonna pull up. It's gonna pull up right there. You're just gonna take it, you're gonna start knitting. When you're doing this, you'll find that these ends are kind of loose because they've this yarn is moving up a whole rib as opposed to before, usually where it just goes up a row. That's fine, that's just an unavoidable part of it. All right, well, it seems that I'm hopelessly losing my light, but you get the idea. It's that simple. You just knit it across, and then you knit it back, and then you knit it across, and then you knit it back, and you just keep carrying the yarn up the side. And that's the same for the single row passes. You just knit one over, and then you knit the next color over, then you knit the next color over, and then you'll find that the following color that you need is standing right there waiting for you. And you just have to pick it up and continue knitting. And that will always happen. So hopefully that should give someone who's never used this chenille before um, a fairly decent idea of how to use it. So hopefully this has been helpful. I'll do a quick edit 
and post it online and happy knitting.